Do the bigger one. Happy with it. Happy with it. If it were so blessed for the past two nights of our uh, week of prayer. And uh, we thank you for coming to our students, to our visitors, and to our very own professors in this college, College of Theology. We gladly welcome, uh, welcome you all tonight for our program for the continuation of our week of prayer this evening. And uh, why not uh, we extend our hands to, our, uh, to the person beside us and give them a happy midweek. So thank you, thank you for your response. Um, on the first night session, our very own beloved dean of our College of Theology, Dr. Holyu Amora, emphasizes that the COT student must let the best in all endeavors, character, knowledge, and skills. And last night, we heard from our pastor, Pastor Kabasan, the magnitude about the, about the magnitude of calling in order to warn our neighbors, in order for, for them to be uh, safe using the illustration of prophet Elisha, uh, Isaiah by saying, Here I am, send me. And tonight we will be hearing once again the message from the Lord. From our Beloved Department Chair, Pastor Danilo Tonejas, rooted from the book of Acts 20, chapter 20. So, our participants for this evening will be projected on the screen. And before we start our uh, worship this evening, uh, I invite everyone, please turn on your uh, cell phone into uh, airplane mode so that our worship is in England that will not be disturbed. So our worship or our program will follow as what I have announced. So once again, good evening and the best of Good evening and happy Sabbath to everyone. <laughs> happy midweek to everyone. <laughs> For our first song, let's see. All this is the power of Jesus' name. Hymn number 107.
Father in heaven. He that are rock our salvation. He who hung the universe. We come before you in the name of our Lord Jesus. You be praised by showing us the unconditional love of the cross of Calvary. Father, we are the people we we have weakness. And we are weak and all of this all of this are what we can give to you. Father, we ask you for this. There's a time that we seek first our appetite and we hurt our fellow believer. Father, we have to pray for your forgiveness. Holy Spirit, we must pray that is stronger than sorrow. Pray that will end into an action. Teach us to be more like Jesus. Unite us with your word as our first ordinances. Testify your goodness that we may not be from the on time. Thank you, Father, for calling us not because we are qualified but because you qualify us. Thank you, Father, for this time to come before you. Lord. Thank you for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening. Thank you so much for that this time. Thank you so much, Sister Agni Lagunera, for that beautiful song. I'm happy to be with these people who believe that they are set aside by God to be in the pastoral ministry. And also with our visitors who are with us. You know, ministry is for everybody. Everybody is called by God as a minister. But to discern what kind of specialized or special ministry that God is setting us aside is a challenge. And that should be a constant struggle as students of the Word of God. That we will be able to discern whether we are in the right track of what God wants us to do. That is why, when you came to the College of Theology, especially the new students, and asking a lot of questions that maybe you're tempted to believe that I am not a believer. <laughs> because I am challenging you for your discernment, so that we'll be able to discover whether we are in the right direction that God wants us to do. Okay? So my talk, the talk that I'm going to share to you this evening is about some uh, way of discerning whether we are in the right track of the plan of God for each one of us. Okay? So there are events that happens to us that somehow it confirms, affirms that we are in the right direction. And if we study the Bible carefully, we will find out that those people who were set aside by God for a particular ministry, events that happen in their lives at least confirm that they are in the right directions. To make that reflection clearer, I'd like to read with you the account of the narrative found in the book of Acts. Maybe you are thinking that this is not in line to the king, the road to Damascus. But this is one of these narratives is talking about Paul. Uh, this is a very interesting narrative, popular. And in fact, I became interested with this narrative. When I was in college, there were only few books in the library, and there are also few magazines and journals. And those journals are not parents. And one of the magazines that I read, one of my favorites, is the magazine entitled Christianity Today. And I, my attention was caught in that column. The title of the column is Eutychus and His Skin. Now I try to scan the latest issue of the Christianity Today. That column is no longer there. But I'm not still very old. But we back then, the column was there. Eutychus and his team. And the narrative uh, that I'm going to share with you is about Eutychus and Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 20, verses 7 to 12. This is a short narrative. Okay? It says here, Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, <coughs> ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. Hmm. Then there were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered together. Verse 9. And in a window sat a certain young man named Eupikos. 
Therefore, those who are sitting beside the window. <laughs> who was sinking into a deep sleep, he was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story. This is only this COP is only up to second story. But if you will be falling from the window, it's enough to have accident. Even though it's only second stories. And he was taken up dead. And I believe that he died really. Because the one who inspected was Dr. Luke, the companion of Paul. So there was a doctor who, died, who pronounced that he, the young man was dead. Eutychus. But Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him, said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Now when he had come up, so Paul went down from the third floor, and then embraced Eutychus, and he shouted, Do not trouble yourselves. His life is in him. Okay? And then he went up, verse 11, and had broken bread. This is, a, this is not communion service. This is a regular fellowship dinner. Okay? This is not, some people, as some theologians interpreted this as celebrating the Eucharist or the communion service. This gathering happened on the first day. And it was an unusual gathering. And then he broke bread and took, he continued talking a long while, even until daybreak. Okay? And he departed. Verse 12. And he broke the young man in alive. And they were not a little comforted. In other words, they were comforted. Okay. This story happens during the third missionary journey of Paul. And he was going back to Jerusalem, passing these places. And he was bringing something, offerings, for the poor people in Jerusalem as part of his concern in his ministry. And I tell you that in this incident, Paul as an apostle, his calling was confirmed with a miraculous event. And that is raising the young man, or bringing the young man back to life. Remember that the apostles prior to him, they experienced such wonders and miraculous signs. And this apostle Paul, who in many times, his apostleship was questioned. And when in fact, he devoted a lot of chapters in his writing, defending his apostleship in this incident. His calling as an apostle was confirmed by the people. Okay? He brought the young man back to life after pronounced dead because he was fallen from the third floor. That is the content of the story. You know the story is very popular. There is a preacher named Jonathan Swift who made a sermon. But they are not talking much about the message, the good news, but they are talking about the disaster when you will be sleeping while the preaching is going. <laughs> it's dangerous to sleep while the pastor is preaching. Sika, it is also dangerous if you are a pastor and you will be speaking very long, <laughs> speaking until midnight. Hmm? This is a description of an event that happened but this is not normative that you need to follow this one. <laughs> that you will be speaking until midnight and even until the daybreak. Okay? There was somebody who said that a sermon that is not long, that is enough, a 30 minute sermon will, be, will touch the heart and the mind. But an hour sermon will be touching the stomach and the chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? 
So they're talking about that one. But my reflection in this narrative is this event confirmed the calling of Paul and it also benefited the people who were there. Remember that it was an, uh, I am not saying that it was an emergency, but Paul was thinking that it is necessary to be speaking that long because he was thinking that he cannot return that place. That could be, that might be his last moment of passing that place and he wanted to educate, to inculcate into the mind of the believers about what they believe. So he said, we will be, uh, we, I will be talking until midnight. And according to the report, only one was sleeping. Who was a good person? <laughs> The only thing is that the deacons wasn't aware that he was sitting besides the window and the window was open. Is the, are the windows closed there? Those who are sitting beside the window. You close that one. Yeah? And at that time, there was no packet, there was no coffee, there was no Starbucks to keep them awake while they were listening. They were thinking that the aroma of the oil of the lamb would keep them awake. But the cold breeze mingled with the aroma brought Eutychus into a sound sleep. The tragedy, he fell down from the third floor and died. You know the name of Eutychus? This is uh, information. I search the meaning of the name of Eutychus. You know what is the meaning of the name? Fortunate. <laughs> Lacking. Even he was fortunate that he was preaching while Paul was preaching because he was brought to life. What if other preacher was preaching and he sleep? Fortunate. That is the, the meaning of his name. It was fortunate. It was also fortunate for Paul that at least he experienced another confirmation of the authority that he had from God as an apostle. You know, last Monday, Dr. Abou mentioned about the three areas in which each one of you who are thinking that you are called by God into the pastoral ministry should be trained and that is what? Personal quality of attitude. And that is, the second is knowledge. And the third is skills, according to the International Board of Ministerial and Theological Education. Now, my question is, when you are in the ministerial program, have you experienced events that you can see that God is confirming, affirming, that He is putting me in this direction. Is there improvement of your personal quality and attitude while you are in the ministerial program? Is there improvement of the perception that you have? The knowledge that God has put inside your brain, appreciating what the Bible is saying, or you have, you have a lot of difficulty comprehending our beliefs. If that's happened, it's nice to think that maybe I am not on this line. <laughs> because once God is calling you in that direction, He will equip you. That's why I said, He is not calling that qualified, but He qualifies whom He called, according to Sister White. Now if you are called into the ministry, into the pastoral ministry, in which you will be doing a lot of teaching, proclaiming the word of God, but you have difficulty understanding the word of God, explaining our doctrine. You need to examine. When you are preaching, did the people understand your sermon or they are confused? <laughs> there was a pastor who was preaching. At 
get the same one. He was standing. By the way, he was not a seventy Adventist pastor. He was standing at the door of the church, shaking hands. And then somebody came and said, Pastor, I did not understand anything. <laughs> he was a man shaking something. Pastor, I did not understand anything. The deacons of the evil comported the pastor. Pastor, don't worry. That guy is very slow in his thinking. <laughs> don't worry about the COVID, Pastor. That guy is very slow in his thinking. He's just repeating what he heard. I think he did not get the punchline. That man, according to the elder, is very slow. He is not thinking well before speaking. He is just repeating what he heard. At worst. That means that that is not only the person who was speaking, that he did not understand anything because that person was repeating what he heard. If you, God, is calling you in the pastoral ministry, teaching, helping the people understand God's dealings with humanity, then God must have given you wisdom to communicate, knowledge to expound the Bible. And then you can say, Lord, thank you so much. You are affirming my conviction that indeed I should be in a pastoral ministry. Think about that, young man. My friends, you think of People repeating a lot of verses. Because when God is setting you aside on this particular ministry, sure enough, through the Holy Spirit, He will equip you. The Bible is very good. If you lack wisdom, understanding, then ask. Because God will be giving you. Remember that understanding, knowledge, this is part of the appropriations of the gift from the Holy Spirit according to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Because we could not go on Without, without being affirmed that indeed God is calling us into this specific pastoral ministry. Ministry is God's business, God's work. And it is our privilege that God is using us to do His work. But ministry is being hindered for the pastoral work is being maligned because there are people who are in the ministry but actually God are not pulling them in that ministry. They volunteer like Judas. <laughs> you know, Judas was not called. He volunteered. I will follow you. Jesus said, no, no, foxes are false. But I don't have anything for you. Never the least people. I had friends who were in the ministry. We were all there. But after the revelation, we were banished. Tragedy, not tragedy, but personal. Tragedy happened to me. I believe. Looking at this narrative, that when Paul was leaning through us, because this happened through us, he passed Miletus. He had a new conviction, not necessarily a new conviction, but he was carrying the seal, the affirmation, that indeed I am one of the apostles who are set aside by God, because besides of other accomplishments and things, those experience of the apostles and even Christ who brought life to the dead people back to life, I experienced that one also. Now to the people. You know the people according to the narrative because the, the affirmation is not only affirming the one who is called, but it has also beneficial effects to the people who are served by the one who is set aside by God. Sit, uh, the ministry of the one set aside by God is bringing blessings to the people 
form the minister. Do you think that life for Eutychus was the same after that experience? Do you think that the life of the relatives of Eutychus was the same after that experience? Do you think that the life of the people in Troas was the same after that experience? I don't think so. Me, they were more benefited than poor because of that incident. Imagine. They are going to mourn funeral. But it said there was madness. And do you think that after that incident at midnight, that he was pulling that duty cause still sleep while Paul was sleeping? According to one commentator, he said that this story is not a gospel, but the action of Paul is portraying the gospel. Because according to the narrative, when Eutychus fell downstairs, Paul did not look down and said, that is the price of sleeping while I was talking. <laughs> but he came down and embraced the young man. And he said that in analogy, it's a slight of what? Uh, Allegorization. But he said that, that you can say that this analogous when Jesus was there in heaven and man came into sin, he did not say, well, that, he, that is the price because you did not obey my voice. But he came down and embraced the sinners. Do you think? The life of the believers at that moment was the same after that incident. I think so. When you are set aside by God into this ministry, you will bring difference to the people whom you are ministering. Life will look at the same. When you are set aside by God into, the, into this ministry, your personal life will be totally different of your life before. And if you are experiencing that, you will say, thank you, Lord. You are affirming that indeed you are setting me aside for this specific ministry. But if you are not experiencing that one, you pray. And say, Lord, give me the discernment. Which college I will go in Satan's semester? <laughs> because when God is sitting us aside into the specific ministry, then He will affirm that plan and that decision. Do you think that that is logical, young people? I think so, it is not. We need to pray that God will give us the burden while we are trying to do work for Him. It is only the Holy Spirit who can give us the burden, the desire, and it is also the Holy Spirit who can give us discernment that we are in the right direction. I repeat the story that I always, I repeated many times in the classroom. There was a man who studied at Mountain View College who prayed what, of what he is going to do in life. After the prayer, he saw a sign. Look up heaven and he saw the clouds form PC. He said, Now I know I have to preach Christ. <laughs> the clouds form PC. So, so my calling is I have to preach Christ. So now I will go to Mountain View College, study theology so that I will be equipped to preach Christ. He stayed at Mountain View College for four years. The only problem, he cannot pass Greek 1. He cannot pass Greek 1. He requested that he said, Sir, I will not be preaching Greek. I will be preaching vernacular. And you let me pass this course. But that he said, no, no. So the, uh, the turning point was Greek 1. Cannot pass Greek 1. So he went back to his province, Kutabaka. 
drive the tractor and plow the farm. And then he planted corn and he was successful. And later on he realized that fishing is not preaching Christ but planting corn. <laughs> I said to the young people, God is calling each one of us into a work that He plans us to do. There is no one who does not have a work to do. Everyone who is born in the kingdom of God is born as a missionary. But we need to discern what kind or what is that specific mission work that God is intending us to do. It could be teaching, but if you are called into the teaching ministry, then that calling is affirmed. Because when you are teaching, your students will start to learn. But if your student doesn't learn, maybe teaching is not your gift. Okay? If you are preaching and the brethren are confused, then you cannot be a pastor. But if you drive and the passengers are saved, then you could be a driver minister. <laughs> Everybody has a work in the kingdom of God. The challenge is, we need to ask the Holy Spirit for discernment that we should be in the right place that God wants us to be. And the Holy Spirit will not deny that to us. The young people, Ministers in the meeting, you need to scrutinize, continue to examine yourself, and recount whether there were affirmations, attestations that God is setting you aside into this particular pastoral ministry. God bless you.
Gracious God, thou art in heaven. Thank you so much for the assurance that indeed you are going to guide us and help us discern the ministry that you want us to accomplish, Lord. Thank you so much for the assurance that you'll continue to bless these young people and help them discern the work that you are intending, intending them to accomplish. Thank you so much that as we depart from this place, your protection will be with us in this week. Amen.